let's do the first lesson. Um, so I'm going to start you from the very, very beginning since I understand you might be new to even using Eclipse to type in Java programs. So let's start by double clicking on your Eclipse icon and it should open Eclipse and it's going to ask you for your workspace. If you remember, your workspace is a folder where all of your projects are going to go. In class, I had you create a folder that's your name that exists on the C drive. If you just see it here, that's great. You can click OK. If you don't see it, click the Browse button and inside the window that appears, you're going to need to find this PC, or if you're using an earlier version of Windows, it might say like this computer or my computer. And then you're going to see an option somewhere that's got a capital C with a colon. That's the C drive. It's usually where all your programs are stored and sometimes your data. And so then in the C drive, you should be able to see the folder that you created. If you haven't created a folder, go ahead and create one and you can make that your workspace. So click OK. If you see it here, it's going to work. And then click OK. And this is Eclipse, where you're going to type in your Java code. If you see a program already open here, you can go ahead and click the Close button to close that tab. All of your old projects, if you have any, are here on the left-hand side in the Package Explorer. Let's go ahead and create a new project. So remember the two-step process from before. File, New, Java Project. And let's call this Print Experiments, because you're going to do some experiments with print statements today. And I'll click Finish. And now here's the project. You can expand it. This SRC is the source folder. It's where you type in the files that are your source code. That's your Java programs. I'll right click, go to new class. Because remember in Java class for now you can think of as meaning program. So I'm going to make a new program. So I'll make a new class and type print experiments. Remember, I don't use spaces in my name. Uh, you can capitalize the first letter of every word to keep your words separate, but print experiments with no spaces. And if you want to, you can click this top checkbox to have it create main for you. All right, the first thing I want to do is delete the comments. Um, comments, remember, are things that start with this double slash. They're like notes to you as the programmer, but the computer ignores them. I kind of don't like it because they, they visually clutter up my program. So I'm going to delete this line. And then this here is a multi-line comment. The comment starts with the line that has slash star star, and then the computer will ignore that line and all of the lines afterwards. See, I can add more lines afterwards. It will ignore all of this up until you get to the slash star, uh, sorry, star, star slash. So I'm also going to delete all those because I don't want them. All right, so yours should look something like this. If you don't have public static void main, you can go ahead and type it. Just to remember from last time, this is the name of your program. Public static void main is what's called the main method. That's how the computer knows where to start running your code. So all of your program needs to start after this opening curly brace on the same line as public static void main. And it needs to be before this closing slash. So it needs to be somewhere in here. All right, so let's run some experiments. We'll type system.out.println, hi. And then let's have that same line and we'll print there. If you don't remember how to run your code, it's this green button here, run. So when you press play, it displays hi there and it looks like each of these is on two different lines. Okay, so common mistakes. Um, if you see any red underlining, that's called a compile time error. So here I changed this lowercase n to a number one, um, and it's a compile time error because the actual name of the command is print ln, line, not number one. So if you've made a small mistake typing, the red underline should identify approximately where it is, and you can try and fix it. So let's change these commands. Instead of print line, there's another command that just says print. It does almost the same thing. So what I want you to do in a second is run this program and then try and figure out what's the difference between the output when it's print line and the output when it's print. Here we go. I run it. Hmm. Okay, so it seems like it's printed high and there, but it's like they're all on one line. Go ahead and add a couple more print statements. And why don't you predict what's going to happen when you run it and then run it. And then if you want to, you can make some of them print line statements and then run it again and try and predict what it's going to do. 
All right, so I hope you have a good idea about what's the difference between print and print line. So let's do another experiment. Let's do star, 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 and then backslash n. This by itself, both these two sort of characters together display one thing, and I want you to figure out what it is. Be sure you do a backslash. The backslash is the one that starts up high and goes down low. It's uh, the key that's directly above the enter key. You might accidentally do this one. This is forward slash because it kind of looks like a dude leaning forwards. It starts low and goes high. That's not the one you want. That's a totally different character. So let's start with the backslash. And why don't you just do this a couple of times? So backslash, so a bunch of stars, backslash n, bunch of stars, backslash n. All right, let's display it. Hmm. All right, so it seems like even though we only have one print statement, you can still get output on multiple lines here. Just to make sure you have the right idea, why don't you add three backslash n's in a row and see if you can guess what that's going to output. And hopefully this is what you were expecting. All right, last thing, let's replace the backslash n's with backslash t's, because backslash t does a different thing. And then run it. And see if you can predict what backslash t is actually doing. What does it actually mean when we have it there? OK, to try and apply what you've learned, uh, do these two exercises. I want you to create a completely new Java class for each one of these. But you can do it inside your same project. So for example, here I am. Um, I can click on source again and right click and say new class. And I can say problem one. And see how now I've got two different files inside my same project, but now I'm editing problem one. So for problem one, you're going to write code that displays this box out of star characters, but you're going to do it two different ways. The first time, you're going to use print line statements. So your first print line statement is going to display that. Your second print line statement will display that. Your third print line statement will display that, and so on. And then you're going to rewrite it so that you're going to display this entire box using only one single print line statement. So now you're really going to have to use backslash n and backslash t, maybe also use some spaces. OK, for your second exercise, I'd like you to write your own name. This is my name. But you're going to write your own name with the first letter of your first and last name in really big letters like this. So this is going to require maybe a little bit of planning. So I'd grab a piece of paper and maybe sort of sketch out on paper what is this first row going to look like, what is the second row going to look like, and then you'll use a whole series of print line statements in order to make it look like this. Um, if you want a real challenge, you can try and do it only using space and backslash n and backslash t with a single print statement. Okay, good luck.